cop slams a special needs second grader to the ground. Wyoming, the parents of a second grader have filed a federal lawsuit claiming that a deputy in Laramie County violated their son's civil rights. Edited footage of the incident shows the school resource officer tackling the eight-year-old to the floor and admitting to giving him a bloody nose during an incident at Freedom Elementary School in Cheyenne, Wyoming, last year. Parents allege that Benjamin Jacob, resource officer and a member of the Laramie County Sheriff's Department, beat up the second grader and deleted the body cam footage. Jacob, Weighing 280 pounds at the time of the alleged attack, the boy, 68 pounds. I did the math. What is that? Uh, 212 pound difference. When can police use physical force Uh, in defense of others, I think, is one thing. Uh, If they feel threatened, perhaps. Okay. A second grade special needs student. There's more. According to the lawsuit, February 2022, the child who is identified in the court record only as JD has been spending his lunch recess in the principal's office in accordance with his customized individualized education plan, IEP, issued because of his neurodivergent disability. After lunch on the day of the incident, as the second grader sat at a desk in the hallway, he received a reprimand from a teacher and a principal for his remarks to a cashier in the school's lunchroom. The deputy joined the group. And a black star with the details. Okay, now let's set that up right there. Second grader, he's doing something in the lunchroom, mouthing off in some way. I didn't see anywhere here in the reporting that they asked for an officer to join them to get this situation under control. Well, the officer. I picture like waddling up to the scene and inserting himself because that's what people in my mind like this do. Okay. They look for trouble and overreact. Just me. Without being asked to intervene, there it is, in the conversation or to enforce disciplinary action, the deputy grabbed the child and forcibly wrestled him down to the floor. The claim staged to quo repeatedly slammed JD face down onto the floor of the conference room, causing multiple bleeding facial injuries. Body cam footage shows the deputy holding the boy's arms crisscrossed behind his back with his face to the floor. Now, who told you to do all that? Was that in your manual? 212 pounds more than the boy and you want to go WWE. Nobody asked you over here. Nobody told you to take it there. As the boy is being smushed into the floor, the video shows JD struggling to breathe, crying uncontrollably, begging for the officer to stop. Fight me, fight me again, the deputy says, as the boy yelps in pain. Ow, ow, ow. I won't. No, you just bit me. Do you want to try this again? Duquo asked the child. Body cam is blurred. As the officer continues berating the boy who's already restrained on the floor, the boy cries out, I'm sorry, ow, put your legs down, deputy barks, ow, I give up, the boy says, while the deputy snaps orders at him to cross his legs. When JD asked your quote to let him go, the officer says, no, no, you don't get to win this now, it's all me, you understand me? And guess where it's going now? You just tried biting me. I should be taking you to jail for assault on a peace officer. This goes under the headline of you sound like a fool. You sound like a fool. Okay. After hearing the threat of jail, the eight-year-old whimpers, I give up. I had to put my hands on you, Jaquo says. Towards the end of the video, because you started kicking me. I put you on the floor, then you decided to try and bite me. He stated again to the child, if you were an adult, you would be in handcuffs and out in my car right now. This is the second time you try to do something to me because I am trying to control the situation because you are out of control. Partial video shared with the public is eight minutes, 44 seconds long. Shows him trying to calm the boy down when he seems unable to catch his voice. I wonder why. 
Time of the assault, the student was not suspected of any crime, was not under arrest, did not possess a weapon. Also, when the boy's father, Ishmael de Jesus, asked Jaquo why he assaulted the boy, the peace officer answered, because as a law enforcement officer, that's my primary function. We're still under that headline. Okay, and maybe I'm dumbing it down too much, but that's the headline I've come up with. Okay, fool and foolishness. The complaint was filed by attorney Matthew Holtzman, who pulled data. I love it when attorneys pull data from a written report by the principal. Holtzman says the assault has traumatized the young boy. JD is still trying to process this and recover what happened to him. And he has nightmares about this. It's something that has truly changed the person he was, a little boy that was growing up and becoming a third grader, he said. Lawyers for the parents state that while the footage, while the footage is disturbing, there are portions of the assault that were purposely deleted from his camera in an effort to conceal his wrongdoing. As per the lawsuit, the deputy remains employed by the Laramie County Sheriff's Office. Nevertheless, Laramie County School District 1 has stated that the deputy is no longer assigned as a school resource officer in any of their schools. Another aspect highlighting the deputy's actions, underscoring their potential criminality, is that Wyoming law explicitly forbids the use of prone restraint in school. Family wants to take the case to trial, hoping the officer is held accountable. And here we are. This is where we are with this situation. Here is Laramie County Sheriff Brian Kozak. So this, Ravana, the quote, according to the parent, the father who said, well, what'd you beat up my kid for, basically? Because that's what I'm here to do, something to the effect. Really? I believe there's one truth in that statement. This resource officer, peace officer, deputy, actually believes that is his job. Mm-hmm. That he is in control and he wanted to control this boy who weighed 212 pounds less than him. And, oh, I don't know, just like when you use a taser on somebody, they cut legs flying, tried to bite me. Wow, your reaction. Well, first, my reaction, you know, just to that quote from him is that if he's, well, first of all, he believes this is his job. But if he's willing to treat a child like that, he'd be willing to treat an adult like that. This is an officer who believes that any perceived slight against him, any perceived disrespect is a justification on his part to use violence to try to control that individual, no matter how small and harmless they may be. I'm glad we're covering this story. I hope it can continues to garner national attention because it highlights violence against disabled children that happens in schools. Not It's not just this one. I know it's not just limited to this school. Obviously, I've worked in disability law, but I also worked in schools for disabled children. So I've been trained in therapeutic crisis intervention. I know that the proper way, if this child was a harming himself, which would or physically harming another child, that would be the time you intervene physically and the correct way to do it so that you don't harm the individual is a bear hug, essentially. And then you walk up to the wall and you sit down, you use the wall to help sit down and you sit there uh, and wait until the child calms down and then you talk through what happened. But that's a last resort only to be used when the child is physically harming themselves or another child uh, because that kid is not a threat to you. You know, he says that the child kicked him. He's sitting at a desk. Maybe he's just swinging his legs, accidentally hit the police officer. Or even if the child meant to do it, he's seven. You are a grown ass man. And that is a seven year old child. And then he, he says he the child bit him, but not until after he threw him to the floor with enough force to cause him facial injuries that were bleeding, immediately bleeding. Ugh. And they didn't get the nurse, which would be a protocol no matter what type of restraint you put a child in. But I'm glad that we highlighted that those types of restraints, prone restraints, are outlawed in that state. They're outlawed in a lot of states. They should be outlawed in every state. Because they kill children. 
and adults. But when they kill children in schools when they use those restraints against them. You know, not infrequently. That's why there are strict regulations in some states around using those types of restraints. I mean, clearly, this isn't, a, you know, just an individual who shouldn't be around, you know, children in schools. This is an individual who shouldn't have any position of authority, any power over other people in any capacity. Clearly, an officer willing to abuse the power that he's been given. Uh, and I'm glad that the family is filing these lawsuits because there needs to be justice. But unfortunately, that traumatic experience, the threat of being arrested, the physical abuse by an adult can never be undone. Yeah. And that's trauma that this child at a very formative age is now going to have to live with. This they this officer has created a massive distrust uh, in adults, in authority, in this child. And, and you know, they might be able to get secure a large uh, uh, hopefully settlement. Yeah, you know, hopefully. But will that ever undo the damage that has been done to this child? No, you can't ever make that person whole, especially not at that at such a young age. So this is truly distressing. I'm glad we're highlighting this, but it's not just him. It's not just this school. I've worked in these schools. I've seen the types of people that they're willing to hire at these institutions who are not cut out for the job. Comes yeah. down to mistreatment of disabled people and, you know, underfunding education in this country. Simple as. Yep. And you can go on and get officers, deputies, whatever, like the quo out of schools. Mm -hmm. They don't belong. And the fact that he's out now and back on the streets, presumably, is disgusting as well. And, you know, the layers of trauma, that's really what, what you're referring to. A grown man beats. And could have done worse to this child. We didn't hear anything about the other two adults who I'm I'm thinking were afraid to intervene and allowed nobody asked him to enter the conversation. I don't know what happened in the lunchroom. And you know why you don't know either? Because it must not have risen to any kind of level that would lead to this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nothing justifies this use of force, not a thing, not one thing. And yet children, special needs children, they're not worth anything, they're not worth anything. This officer was like a cat with a little mouse, toying with it and playing with it and taking out all of his frustrations on, I didn't even, hear about any kind of radical behavior from a child. I just heard child behavior. Mm -hmm. And up until the point that the child was physically assaulted, I the child wasn't violent. That's what the report would surely reference that or make it up even. They didn't think to make it up this time. Outrageous. And then the father, who must be an overly decent man, wants to know why you assaulted his child instead of taking on another man. Okay. This is disgusting. Last word is yours, Ravana. Yeah, I'll just add that I mentioned I worked in schools with disabled children. Specifically, I was a one on one uh, with a seven year old child who had gone through a lot of trauma, more trauma than any person, let alone child, should have to endure, especially at that young age. And uh, he had behavioral disabilities. He acted out. Uh, and some days he hit me, spit on me, pulled at my hair, you know, swore at me. Uh, clawed at me with his fingernails, uh, but I never put my hands on a child. I, ne I never put him in a restraint simply because he was attacking me because there was a huge difference between me being an adult and him being a child. He wasn't a threat to me. He was a child in distress, and I had tools at my disposal to use to help calm him down, to de-escalate the situation to intervene and to teach him when that situation arises in the future, how we can address it.
differently. That's how the people working at this school have been trained. So I'm also given pause by the fact that one, this officer working in the school where there are disabled children, children with IEPs was not given that training or totally ignored it. But I'm also concerned by the adults that were standing there that didn't intervene, that didn't try to stop him, that didn't go try to get medical attention immediately for the child. They waited for a period of time that allowed this officer to do this because that to me suggests a culture at this school that accepts this type of abuse of children. And that needs to be investigated and this officer needs to be behind bars. All right, you're valuable experience is just so helpful here. Because when you related your own experience, I think you began by talking about what a seven year old child had been through. And as a result, what symptoms the child was left with, right? When a child is unable to self soothe, you talked about that wall technique, the bear hug to help assist and bring the emotional quotient down, okay? None of that was done here, unless the training was, you know, in some kind of outdoor, only the strongest can survive, tear up the environment reality show. I don't think there was any training here, none by anyone involved. Who's gonna tell? We'll keep following it. Gotta have a lawsuit here and criminal charges, folks.